these will talk to you about the things that you face with your clients and I'll try and tell you what is it that you can do so that you can work better. The first topic that I want to talk to you about is dealing with difficult clients. Now, first of all, you need to think about who do you actually define as a difficult client? A difficult client is a client who is telling you that mera kuch nahi ho raha hai, mera kuch nahi ho raha hai. Ya, a difficult client is a person who is, um, mm, you know, not complying with your plan or a difficult client is a person who is not showing up on time or a difficult client is a person who's a mixture of all of these things. So I'm going to tell you a story which happened way, way early in my career. So way early in my career, what actually happened is uh, I was dealing with a client who I thought was difficult and she was difficult for me because she would only, uh, you know, she didn't come from a background uh, which was similar to what most of my clients came from. So most of my clients came from educated backgrounds and this one did come from a very well-educated background. And so for me to tell her things or, um, you know, to tell her how really to do this properly was a little different as compared to what I would um, face with my other clients. And that's when I was just casually complaining to one of my clients who was a dentist. And I said to her, you know, this person is really difficult for uh, me to deal with. She just doesn't understand anything. And that's when my very successful, she's a very successful uh, dentist. Her name is Shalini Pradhan. And then she told me that, Dek Rujuta, you know, if you're working with people like me, honestly speaking, we don't even need people like you. Ye jo bhi hum log kar rahe, hum log khud bhi kar sakte hai because you are pretty much just kind of endorsing what we already know about health and fitness. But a person who doesn't quite understand or who doesn't quite have the basics and if you are able to get through with her and if you are able to see the exact same success with her as you see with other clients who understand the basics of staying healthy and fit only then will you be a success because if you don't crack it with the tough ones then you cannot really think of yourself as uh, you know as a professional so our difficult clients the ones who don't get us the ones who question the ones who are not doing it correctly are really the ones who propel our careers it's important to hear them out so what can you do in practical life to actually make your difficult clients easy going back to the very first point that we spoke about yesterday listen to them with full attention when you listen to them with full attention you will realize that some of the points about which they're cribbing could be points that you could actually work around address and do better if you figure out what those points are, address those, do better. You will also realize that some of the points that they are cribbing about or complaining or whatever else that it is, are actually not points that are, uh, that are worth tackling, you know. They're probably just rants and if it is a rant, let it be. Don't encourage that rant, don't dismiss it, listen to it. Uh, you know with your attention and why should you still listen to it with your attention it is because a client who's complaining is much better than a client who's suffering in silence a client who's complaining allows you the chance to reach out to them to to make ch changes for them to allow you to explain the same thing to them in a different manner but a client who suffers in silence is a client who is lost. So a client who is suffering in silence and not telling you what their real issues are, are actually your difficult ones. Uh, not really the clients who are uh, complaining and cribbing, you know, they're fine. They are actually fine. They're helping you get better. Uh, you'll probably see more of them when you begin your journey and over a period of time, uh, you won't see them as much. The complaints kind of reduce.
Now coming to the second point of what is essential when you're working with clients. Now what is essential when you're working with clients is that you collect more data points. What do I mean by data points? Now a lot of times when people come to you, they're going to say that I want to get healthier and they've been advised to lose weight to get healthier. So typically it is like lose weight so that um, so that your diabetes is down, lose weight so that your cholesterol is down, lose weight so that you're getting pregnant, lose weight so that your back pain is down, lose weight so that the migraine goes, lose weight so that the menopause is easier, blah, blah, blah. So when they are coming to you about weight loss, also ask them what are the other things that bother them on a day-to-day -day life. So check on their digestion, check on their energy levels, check on their HbA1c, check on their uh, lipid profile, their triglycerides, their TSH, whatever are the other things that they want to focus on. And then in your program, track how they're progressing on all of these parameters because it is absolutely possible that they may progress on, let's say, uh, you know, their HbA1c may get better regulated or their BP may get better regulated but they don't really see the weight loss that uh, they were hoping to see then at that point of time you can tell them that now that their body is metabolically healthier now that they're regulating their blood pressure better or their diabetes better that it's only a matter of time that they will also see that weight loss or you can tell them that now that they're digesting weight better that they're no longer as constipated as they used to be then it means that they are uh, you know that they will also see that weight loss so that's what you need to do when you collect more data points about your clients you are able to help them much more than when you just collect one data point which is their body weight and then keep working on losing or you know getting rid of that body weight because they're going to say things like but my weight is stuck my weight is stuck so uh instead of you getting as impatient as they are if you simply educate them that if the whole health improve hai, to weight bhi kam ho jayega, so then they are able to see that perspective and do it in uh do it with a more uh, you know do it with a better buy do it with more discipline do it with more consistency so to help them do that you need to collect more data points now the third thing that is essential to do uh, when you're working with your clients is to respect the fact that your client is a free living individual uh, your client may have a home where uh, they live an office to go to a mother-in-law who is sick a child who's appearing for exam a holiday that they need to go to a sister who is getting married um, you know maybe whatever else that one does you know an assignment that they need to complete now free living individuals need more realistic diet plans they can't do diet plans which are just like rice hata do gluten hata do dairy hata do uh, you know khali protein zyada karo and stuff like that they need to live with other people with their colleagues with their families with uh, with people who could be dependent on them with people who are responsible towards whom they are responsible so respect the fact that they are free living individuals and make their plans in a way that allows them to sustain this diet of this diet that you have planned make it easy for them to follow their diet don't tell them that they lack willpower if they cannot do the diet introspect and you will figure out that you are goofing up on making uh, you know on designing their diet properly if you design your diet for a free living individual and if you design it well then they will comply to it without any difficulty and they will begin to see the program outcomes that they have signed up for whether it is weight loss whether it is diabetes uh, regulation whether it is bp cholesterol whatever else you know so the design is the key and you're designing for a free living individual so keep that in mind at all points of time the fourth thing that is very very important that you must remember is that 
They teach us that food is carbohydrate, protein, fat, calories, fiber, soluble fiber, insoluble fiber, phytoestrogen, and isoflavones, and God knows what. But food has many other roles to play than just provision of nutrients to the body. What are the roles that it plays? So just some of the critical roles that it plays which makes it extremely important to our human life is that it allows for survival, it allows us a sense of security, it allows us a sense of belonging, it allows us a sense of nurture and it also allows us the ability to unwind and to feel happy over food which is also why you will notice that uh, your clients may actually, uh, or not just your clients, but even you, even you may like sometimes want to go back to that chai tapri in your college and have a cup of chai, even if it was like loaded with sugar with your friends, or when you're feeling low and down, you may want to go to your favorite samosa joint or uh, you know want to have a cupcake or when you come back from a long holiday maybe if you just want to have khichdi and kadi or maybe when you meet your uh, cousins you guys almost have like a routine of hum log jab milte hain tab hum log yahi khate hain so food plays all of those roles now what happens is that when our clients allow food to play those roles of unwinding relaxing feeling happy having a sense of uh, self-love nurture security then they begin to feel guilty because they have been brainwashed into feeling that food ka ye sab karne mein koi role nahi hai food should just be protein carbohydrate fat ka koi ek specific proportion tumko ek time pe itna hi khana hai aur itne hi calories tumko consume karne hain now if they keep feeling guilty about allowing food to play the full role that it is supposed to play then remember that a guilty client is never a client who's progressing on their fitness goals. And you don't want that to happen because when your clients don't progress well, it also reflects poorly on you. So you must allow them to understand that you know food also plays all of these roles and we are free living individuals so there are going to be times maybe when there is an alumni meet or when there is a Diwali meal or when there is a Sunday relaxing meal or whatever else when you will have food for all of these reasons too and you don't have to compromise on getting good nutrients from your food just because you allow food to play its full its fullest potential role so that's what you need to understand here and um, educate really your client about the many other roles that food plays which is also why in the un sustainable developmental goals no hunger across the globe is something that all of us are supposed to strive for you know it's not about the sustainable goal is not about uh, everyone being skinny but it is really about no one staying hungry and when your clients deprive themselves of food that they really love you know they do feel hungry they do feel hungry for that love for that sense of nurture for that sense of security and sanity so remember this and educate your clients about these aspects too and now lastly this is my last point because i do see this happening quite a bit in the profession of nutrition and dietetics and i would really want this to change um, and the last point is no shaming your client no scaring your client and no pleasing your clients no shaming your clients into believing that because they did follow this diet they deserve to be fat or deserve to have unregulated blood sugars or deserve to have cellulite or uh, you know whatever else that it is if a client is unable to follow the diet that you planned remember there is you need to relook into the diet design 
okay because a lot of times and i've seen this i've told you this earlier also i'm typically people's last choice no one comes to me as the first choice people come to me as the last choice and a lot of them and a lot of times i am that i become the choice because the dietitian that they used to go to earlier is becomes a person that they are scared of they don't want to be on the phone with that person they feel that abhi wo humko chillayegi wo humko daategi maine you know main apne mummy ke ghar pe gayi thi tabhi maine ek peda khaya tha to abhi mujhe daat padegi and then because they're so scared of that feeling of that humiliation they no longer they fall off the program and then look for other things to do so no shaming them that's the one thing the other thing is no scaring them no scaring them into making projections into their future and saying ke ab bhi to tum 70 kilo ke ho to 5 saal mein to tum 80 ke ho jaoge fir uske baad mein to pata nahi tumhara kya hoga tumko wheelchair hi lagega nahi to tumko tum apne diseases ko feed kar rahe ho and all of those things you know so no shaming uh i mean sorry no scaring a client your we are not face eaters no one can predict the future each one of us only has control over what can we do now and as a professional you should bother about what can you do in this moment to help your uh, client and what each one of us can do in this moment to help our clients is that we educate them about you know about better behaviors about all the roles that food plays in their uh, life and we advocate for them to take a more simple sensible and a sustainable route towards their health and fitness नहीं तो क्लाइंट से ज्यादा डाइटिशियन को या न्यूट्रिशनिस्ट को ही घाई रहती है कि इसका वजन कम कम होएगा मतलब वी डोंट इवन अलाउ फॉर द एडेप्टेशन प्रोसेस टू टेक प्लेस सो डोंट डू दिस डोंट शेम देम डोंट स्केर देम मेक श्योर दैट यू एजुकेट देम एंड दैट यू री अश्योर देम दैट लाइक ऑल गुड थिंग्स गेनिंग हेल्थ लूजिंग वेट takes time it's important to be patient and it's important to make incremental progress 3 months at a time fat karke kuch nahi hota hai fat karke khali accident hi hota hai so uh, remember this and don't shame or scare your clients and lastly also don't please your clients you know so there will be some clients who are kind of exploitative jo har time late aate hai ya uh, jo har time unki recall sheet mein bhi nahi bharte hai या जो हर टाइम आपको जो भी यू नो वट एवर दैट यू नीड योर डेली रिपोर्टिंग वो नहीं करते हैं एंड देन बिकॉज दे डोंट शो अप ऑन टाइम यू मेक अ क्लाइंट हु हैज शोड अप ऑन टाइम वेट जस्ट बिकॉज समवन इज लाइक थ्रोइंग देयर वेट अराउंड सो बी यू नो बी रिस्पेक्टफुल टूवर्ड्स ऑल योर क्लाइंट्स द वंस एस्पेशली द वंस who come on time and who comply and always ensure that they are not having to pay for the bad behavior of some client that you haven't learned to deal with effectively yet so uh, that's all from uh, me today